All right. We're at less than 67, and we're taking a look at geometric solids. Geometric solids, of course, are 3D shapes. And usually when we look at these, we talk about prisms, pyramids, and then our specialty curve objects such as uh, cylinders and cones and eventually spheres. And so we look at those, those different ideas. Today we're going to focus on working with these 3D shapes and how to understand the different parts of them. So as we talk about a shape such as the cube shown here, right? we can talk about the fact that it's a cube, sometimes known as a cuboid, and it's a special kind of rectangular prism. A prism, of course, is a shape that is has one face, that is a shape in this case happens to be a square, and it's joined together by rectangles to uh, another face that also happens to be a square. And if I, well, that's not so bad. All right, we can look at it in that different way. But usually, when it comes to geometric solids, we want to know what the how many faces it has, how many objects it has, and how sorry edges it has, and how many vertices it has. So a cube, we think about a dice is a cube. And so the faces is the easy one, six faces. All right. From there, we can talk about edges. Edges, of course, is one thing going with this, right? We got four edges. That's where two faces come together. Those four edges are opposite four more edges, and they're joined together by four edges. So that gives me a total of 12 edges. And the vertices, of course, are the corners, and a cube has eight. Now, when you get done with this, you might say, well, how do I know I'm right? I think I counted everything right. How do I know? There's this formula called Euler's formula, and he developed this really simple principle. He says, faces plus your vertices minus your edges should always equal 2. So if I take my faces of 6 and 8, that gives me an answer of 14. I minus my edges of 12, I get an answer of 2. All right. So I, I must have done something correctly. All right. Let's try it with our second shape. Our second shape, of course, we would say is a okay. Main shape is pentagon. All right. So pentagon, uh, right? Null, making it an adjective, and we're talking about this happens to be a prism. All right. And with that in mind, all right? We can now talk about faces. We've got two faces which make up the pentagons, right? So two faces that make up the pentagon. And because the pentagon has five sides, that means it's going to need five rectangles to join them together. So two plus five gives me a faces of seven. All right. Then with that in mind, we got the faces, faces, edges, edges, edges. That's what I'm trying to say. So five edges plus the other five from the other pentagon joined together with five edges, which gives me an answer of... 15. And so vertices, we should come away with it's a five sided figure. So there's five corners, meaning five more corners. It should give me a nice answer of 10. Double checking my work, right? Faces plus vertices is 17 minus 15 equals 2. Whew. Doing pretty good so far. All right. Now that formula works really, really nice for a prism. But what about? This wonderful shape. Of course, right away we're saying, well, that's a cylinder. That's easy. Well, how many faces does it have? Well, one, two, do you count the other side of the face? Usually, when it comes to cylinders, we're focusing at this point right now, we're just focusing on making sure you know what a cylinder is and that there's a circle on the top and a circle on the bottom. And technically, right, if I had a circle and right, I had a rectangle, right, that's the wrapper around the can, you know, that's what it is. I have two circles that are are joined together with one rectangle. Okay. And so we have that concept. Okay, your turn. So name these shapes, list the number of edges, faces, and vertices as you're working with these different ideas. Right? And of course I give you that clue to help you understand um, Euler's formula. All right, can help you with that. First sample. Another concept that comes up is the idea of surface area. All right? Surface area, of course, is you know if you're going to put wrapping paper on a present, how much wrapping paper do you need? 
or you know if you're going to cover your a box or paint your box you know you're you're covering the surface of the box you're not you know you're not doing the inside you're just doing the surface the top bottom and then the four sides and so with that in mind we want to understand how do we find surface area surface area of prisms at this point we're just going to stick with prisms surface area of prisms is takes a number of steps which can make it take a little longer but as long as we understand how to find area. Area, of course, is length times width. So if I find the, the area of, in this case, my cube, right, I need to find my area of each side. So if I find the area of this side right here, which is a cube, and cubes all have the same length of edges, so 5. So 5 times 5 gives me 25 centimeters squared. Area, right? 5 times 5. Right. Now, because a cube is a special kind of prism, we know that all the sh all the sides are the exact same size. So, to make this simpler, I don't have to take the time to do it to all of them, but instead I can just multiply by 6, because I know there are 6 sides. And so when I multiply by 6, I get an answer of 150. <laughs> and my label is not going to change, right? I didn't have 6 centimeters, so it's still going to say area of 150 centimeters squared. So we have this, and we'll be working, this is just basic review of surface area. We'll be going in more depth with this as we move throughout the year. All right, the last thing in your sample for today then, our second sample for today, is working with what's called a net. A net is where you take a 3D shape and basically you lay it out. So you can see all the different sides, you can see all the edges, and if you were to take these and fold them back up, it would form that 3D shape. So these are what are called nets of cubes. However, one of these is not a net because if you were to fold it back up, you would not be able to get a cube, a closed box. Right? You you probably could get real close to a box, but like the lid would be open or a side would be open or something like that. And so some one of these squares is going to double up or it's not going to meet up the way you want it to. So think about it, and if you're struggling, don't be afraid to... to Take a piece of paper and draw these shapes and cut them out and figure it out. All right? So which one of these? That's your sample for lesson 67.